Welcome back everybody to <laughs> I'm doing an impersonation of a guy on YouTube uh, who was a channel called Recordology. You know, it's about entry level turntables. You know, those Crosley suitcase players. A vinyl guy, I would never buy one of those. Uh, this guy, he's always asking the people what they want to see. And then I think about myself, I don't care! You know, I do this user channel, I don't care what you want to see. I do what I want to show you. So, I don't know, I guess it's too much. But I think he's, I think this guy is like a Republican Trump supporter, I really do. I could be wrong, I hope I am. Anyway, today's video is on traditional grip versus match grip. Traditional grip versus match grip. And if you watch a lot of the YouTube videos on this subject, it's sort of lends itself to being like either or. Either you play match or you play traditional. You choose this one or this one. And that's just not the case. And I have a theory on that. I have a theory. I don't know if you, can, if you see my eyes and wear my glasses. You know, it seems like in my life I'm destined to have black eyes. I went to, uh, to uh, see if I wanted to maybe work part-time as a school bus driver. There was a place that paid training to learn how to drive a school bus. And you got to take a physical for this school bus. I don't know why, because I've seen some of the people driving school buses and they don't look like they've had a physical in about 100 years. Anyway, the last thing I had to do, a 30-pound weight, I got to jump out of the back of the bus. Open the door and jump out. And that's what I did, except really what you're supposed to do is sit down at the back of the bus, open the door, sit down with the other and push yourself off. Me, I jumped from standing up, the door goes flying open, flying back, hits me in the head, ba-boom, ba-boom. Uh, I decided I want to do it, one, because I'm stupid, and two, because I'm 61, I just don't want to learn any more new things like that. If I learn any more new things, it'll be right here. All right. Let's talk about traditional grip. So, I come at this from, you know, I'm probably going to post a clip of Ralph Crandom here. Now tell me, sir, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I bribe a dust. You bribe a dust? A dust a bribe. A dust a bribe. Oh, I see, you're a bus driver. Is yeah. that it? Yeah, man. I love the Honeymooners, even though that show was kind of misogynistic with the bang zoom when we threatened to hit his wife. That really bugs me. But there's some stuff that's kind of funny in it. Okay, so I come at this from a different way. I started learning traditional grip when I was 11 years old, right? That's the only way that I knew. And I did that until I was about 30. And as I noticed in New York, almost all my contemporaries were playing match. I began to teach myself match grip. And I really, when I, rem I remember that time, I could not do a double stroke roll match grip like I could do traditional. So it took me a while to teach myself that. But I got to really sort of study my hands through that period. And a lot of you guys, you younger guys, are coming at this the other way, where you've learned match and now you want to learn traditional. So. Again, I don't want you to think it's either or. I think traditional grip is a good thing to have in your arsenal, but I want to tell you the truth. If you've been playing match grip and you're good at it, there is not a thing that you can't do match that you did traditional or that traditional players can do. In other words, to be honest, Match really is the better grip from a biological standpoint, from an ergonomic standpoint, it really is the better grip. And there really isn't anything you, you can probably do anything matched better than you could do traditional. However, the reason I go back and forth when I play, if you came to see a show, depending on the show, it's anywhere from 80-20 to, you know, 60-40. In other words, probably right now today I'll play most shows about 70% match grip and 30% traditional. And the reason I use my traditional grip, 
you know, I had to kind of think about it. I had to kind of think about it. I have a theory of why. And it's basically this idea. Some things just feel better when I play them traditional. Now, why? I'm not sure, but, but here's my theory. And I was taking this theory a little bit from Jojo Mayer. So, my left and right, I'm left-handed. So, I play traditional in my right hand. If you're right-handed, you play traditional in your left hand. So, don't get confused when you see the video. My left hand and right hand, as well as your left hand and right hand, are not the same. And they're not wired the same in your brain. I don't know if I, and science is not in 100% agreement on the, the left side is for abstract and the right side is for math or vice versa or whatever it is, um, but I do think that they're wired differently because I think a little differently, I feel a little differently when I'm playing traditional grip than when I play match. Um, People would say sometimes, well, when you're playing traditionally, you can play all those ghost notes a lot quieter. But that's not really true either, because Bernard Purdy is the king of all ghost notes, and he plays match. And his ghost notes are quieter than anyone. So that's not it. Some would say, well, when you're having those conversations between your snare hand and your bass drum in jazz, underneath the swing groove, traditional is just the best way to go. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of little things you can do match, maybe with threes even, that I think maybe even easier than traditional. I don't know if that's true either. Anyway, those are not the reasons I switch. I think differently, I feel differently, and I play differently, and sometimes, now here's the key, I'm going to say this twice, the way the music is speaking to me it feels better to do a traditional grip. The way the music is speaking to me, it feels better to do a traditional grip. Again, I want to preface this whole video by do you need it? No. But if you're in your, if you're in your 30s or your 40s and you've been playing a match grip, I'm sorry, all your life and you don't want to learn a new thing, skip over this video, send me money and go to the next video. But if you're in your 20s, this is a good thing to have in your arsenal. So let's talk about the how-to's, the how-to's. Here's a quick lesson. I come from, uh, Joe Casadas is really where I got my traditional grip from, uh, owner of the Martin Drum Shop on 48th Street in New York. He played for Peter Nero. I'm going to put a clip from him right in here. I put, put this clip before in other videos. Uh, he was called the Drummer's Drummer. Look him up. Very well known. There are videos of him on YouTube. Um, he's a contemporary of Joe Morello, and this is the technique I'm going to show you today. Remember, I'm going to do this in my right hand. If you're right-handed, you're going to do this in your left hand. Place the stick. This is an exercise to get good at traditional. Now, by the way, Buddy Rich, if you notice, he held his stick. I mean, his, his traditional grip was way up here. And that's fine. There are some guys that are way down here. I don't like that. I'm about here. Whatever feels good to you. You place the stick in the webbing. It's like a Star Trek thing. The webbing of your 
traditional, the hand you're going to use traditional grip, right here between your thumb and your index finger, place it right here and clamp down. Now the exercise to get good at this is to bounce the stick using reaction, action, reaction, but your goal is to get the stick to go back further than your wrist would normally allow. You want that stick to travel further than your wrist would normally allow. Here I go. This will hurt after a little bit. Matter of fact, because I don't do it that much anymore, it hurts. Right, so I'm letting this stick travel as far back as it can. Utilizing the action reaction. What am I doing? I'm learning to feel the bounce. You don't have to do it fast. You can do this, and you can do this while you're watching TV with your pad. This is a good way to get that feeling, that feeling of the bounce in your traditional grip hand. Now, I want to make it go a little faster. So there's a couple of different versions of traditional grip. And I don't know what this really is called. I'm going to do the way I taught. I'm, my version utilizes my index finger quite a lot for speed. So watch. Now, using the laws of physics, all right, the energy that is being produced by this, if I place my finger here and shorten the distance that my stick is traveling, that energy doesn't go away that would make the stick go all the way back. The stick is just going to travel faster. So watch. I'll just go eight and eight slow to fast. Watch, using this finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm pushing a little bit. I'm pushing a little bit. So once I shorten that distance, Making the stick go faster is very, very simple. So that's really phase one. And you can do that, you know, every day, a couple hours a day, every night while you're watching TV. Just going back and forth, right? Now I haven't utilized these three fingers yet. So now me, I use two over, two below two over, two below. So this is the finger I'm using, and I'll get to it, I'm kind of using it like a gun, like a, like a, you know, pulling the trigger, so to speak. I hate those words, so to speak. I absolutely hate them. And my, my dad hates me, and, and I'm not kidding by that. And he says that all the time. Like my dad will say, so the other day I was at McDonald's, so to speak. No, you weren't. You were at McDonald's. You didn't, not so to speak, you were just there. And then I had a cheeseburger, so to speak. He just uses it everywhere because he's like, uh, whatever, he's crazy. He's 91, you know. I'd say God bless him, but I don't really care that much. He doesn't, the man has not spoken to me in years. I don't speak to him anymore. Whatever. I'm screwed up. All right. So, once you gain some facility on this, now, we're going to put two fingers over, two fingers under, and we're going to begin with a double stroke roll. Because basically, look, whether it's match or traditional, the, the technique you use for your double stroke roll is what you use for almost everything you do around the kit. So watch, here we go. I'm going to start with my right hand. Again, if you're left-handed, this is your traditional grip hand. If you're, if you're right-handed, this is your traditional grip hand. If you're left-handed, this is your traditional grip hand. So here we go. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. So if you notice where I am right now at this speed and the position of my fingers are going to change as I get faster. So at this speed, I don't really need these two fingers. I'm relying on action reaction with my thumb. As a matter of fact, when I'm doing back beats, my fingers are open, right? These two fingers are open. And I am letting that stick do that thing by traveling further than my wrist will allow to get a really good backbeat. So when people also say that they can get a better backbeat match grip than they can traditional, they're not using this method because my backbeat traditional is badass. Okay? And, you know, 
I'm no Steve Gavin Caliuta, but I can backbeat like, no, Vinny, his traditional, his backbeat is loud. All right. So, as I'm moving slow, my fingers are open, and most of the bounce is coming from the thumb. Now, as I get faster, you know, I'll get the close up on this. Again, so it bounces, but before it can go too far, I hit it back. Kind of getting an accent on that second stroke. And that little accent on that second stroke helps this thing from sounding like a flat tire. But here I go. So now definitely you can see it's this, right? Uh, some people will tell you that they're pushing up with the bottom, that, that your ring finger. I don't do that. I don't know anyone who does that. Maybe that one guy who's the Buddy Rich clone. I can't remember his name on, uh, uh, on YouTube. Maybe he does it, but I don't do that, right? And this finger is a guide to make sure the stick doesn't go all around, right? So, now I guess if you wanted to, you could do this with just action reaction. But I think I, I lack speed and the feeling that I'm, I'm in control. So I like to keep my finger on it. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been playing match grip and traditional grip for years and years and years. And I still kinda like the way my double stroke roll sounds better traditional than it does match. It sounds good both ways, but I can notice little subtleties and things. Uh, I got something in my eye. My God in heaven. You know, it never ends. All right. So as I'm playing around the kit, I'm traditional grip. I'm going to use both. Or well, I'm going to use it open. I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to use all sorts of ways. Again, really, it's coming. All the work is coming from my thumb, my index, and then as a guide, this finger, this, uh, my, my uh, I don't know what that finger's called. The ring finger uh, is just a rest spot. It's a rest. I'm not utilizing it to push up or anything like that. It is a rest spot, okay? So again, to reiterate, step one, Webbing of the hand, get good at the action reaction, the bounce. Use this finger for speed. And then your double stroke roll. Using this finger like a gun, like a gun. You're pulling a trigger, right? Now, I'm the last one to talk. I don't own any guns. I got a close relative. They moved an hour from here. They used to live in a really nice town. Now they live in a town with one red light, and they got like five guns in the house, six guns. They got kids. Oh my God, scares me to death. And I ask questions about it. Why do they get so many guns? And, and the answer is, well, I'm worried about being trafficked. They live in a town. They got one red light, one grocery store. And I'm, I'm downtown uh, do, when I'm on slow. This summer I was really busy. I didn't do it, so I'm doing Uber again. I'm downtown in Detroit, middle of the night. No guns, no nothing. Drive an Uber. I don't know. You know, you can, if it's gonna be, if it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. Okay. Here we go. I don't want any guns. I don't want guns in my house. Okay. Anyway, I don't. Know. I'm such a whack job. So again, I'm using this finger like a gun for speed. Now here's the bad news, folks. It's going to take you a couple of years. That's why I say to you, if you've been playing match grip all your life and you don't feel the need, don't do it. Don't switch. Just stay where you are. You're fine. But if you're in your 20s and you want this in your arsenal because it's just going to be another approach 
go for it. All right, guys. I will see you on the next one. I hope this helped you out. Let me take you out with this. I'll mess around on the pad. We'll use mostly this camera so you can see it up and close. And if you need help on traditional grip, DM me. I will get with you. We'll work it out. Here we go. Right into the ending of this show. See you on the next one.